Now it's time to prove this claim we have for Fibonacci. So I've stated it as a theorem. For all positive integers m and n, f sub m plus, m plus n is fn plus 1 times fm plus fn fm minus 1. And um, so there's two things that are going to be new about this. One is the strong induction bit, um, and that's going to be just a little bit more involved than regular induction. And the other is that there's two parameters here. There's two integer variables. You might think we have to do an induction on both, which would be a double induction argument, and that, that can happen. They can have an induction on one integer variable inside an induction proof on the other. Um, but we're not going to have to do that. We're going to be able to do this for any m, any positive integer m, anything the natural numbers, um, that's arbitrary, and we're only going to have to do step-by-step -step reasoning, inductive reasoning, on n. Okay. So throughout, um, I'm going to be working with things where m is an arbitrary variable, and it had better work for all m, but it is going to it is going to work for all m. Um, so the m's are going to kind of come come simultaneously, and the n's come progressively inductively. So um, as I said with the introduction here. Y there's this kind of tr there's this trick that makes it look like there's no base case, but especially in one of these arguments, where we're not just looking back one, but looking back one and two steps very explicitly. Those are the, the lookbacks we're doing. The first two cases in this case are going to be special. So n equals one. The principle of strong induction says, if you can prove n equals one, assuming nothing, that in other words, on its own, then you, then you're, you're good. Well, in other words, you have to just be able to show that n equals 1 is true, not inductively at all. It's the start of the chain. Um, okay, so n equals 1, the statement is, and this should be true for all m all at once. Let's see if it is. Um, when n equals 1, that's f sub 2, f sub m, plus f sub uh, 1, f sub m minus 1. Oh, yeah, that's totally true. Okay. Um, is that true? Yeah, absolutely, because f sub 2, f sub m. So note what I'm doing, what I'm going to do here. I'm not going to start with this and manipulate it. That would be backwards logic. I'm going to take one side of it. Not that there's much to do here. I'm going to take one side of it. I'm going to evaluate part of it. f2 and f1 are both 1. Oh, duh. Right? And yes, that equals equal to fm plus 1. That's the basic Fibonacci rule. And we know that's true for all m because that's but by definition how Fibonacci works. I don't have to, to do that inductively on m. Okay, so that's true. Okay. Um, now, you could say, well, maybe I can now start the induction process. I'm going to do n equals 2 as a part of all the other ones. But the thing is, if n equals 2 is still a little special because n, if you do n equals 2, looking back one and another one gets you to n equals 0, which is a, um, a little bit hazy. So we really have to do n equals 2 separately as well. Okay. Let me just erase in place here. Okay. Um, n equals 2. Okay, so fm plus 2. Does that equal f3, fm plus f2, fm minus 1? Um, and yeah, absolutely. This is, again, what we checked before. The base case, as again, if you've done some informal induction to discover or convince yourself it's true, you should have done the base cases already. Let's take the more complicated side of this expression. That's equal to 2 f sub m plus 1 f sub m minus 1. And that's one of them can be just an f, of f sub m. And then f sub m plus f sub m minus 1 is f sub m plus 1. And you bet, by the Fibonacci rule applied to m plus 1, that's going to be f of m plus 2. Okay, so that was, that was kind of right where we re started getting an inkling of something interesting was going on. Okay, so now we've done those separately because looking back one and two steps from n equals one and n equals two is going to feel different from looking back in general. Okay, so now uh, the inductive step. Okay. The inductive step, we're going to assume that f sub m plus k. Now we're going to bring in the k in a little bit of a different role we had with the non-strong induction. k is just a stand-in for any number less than n. Um, so we could say, you know, sort of temporarily, 
fix an n and assume that assume did not come out real well even by my standards okay let's assume that that's and I'm just putting in uh, changing the n to a k for all k less than n so here n is the case we'd like to show it's a little bit different before it was k plus one was going to be the new case and just following the book's notation it's a pretty good notation now n is the label for the new case and then k is the label for the group label for all or let's say any particular case we've already shown up to but not including the new case n okay um okay and so now i want to show Ooh, and i can cheat a little bit let me i don't need this header um to show well i just want to show this okay here i don't even have to change the letters okay that might feel circular that i just same thing that i wanted to prove but the 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 quantifiers are different it's that n is one particular uh case and i'm assuming that i've done all the cases k before n. okay so um let's go ahead and uh, do the same thing we just did in the previous examples we're going to take f sub n plus one f sub m plus f sub n f sub m minus one and i'm going to expand that out uh i'm going to expand that out the f sub n plus one is an f sub n plus f sub n minus one f sub m plus the f sub n is an f sub n minus one plus f sub uh, n minus two f sub m minus one okay and let me see if i can squeeze this in i'm gonna uh, reshuffle that a little bit i'm gonna say that's f sub n f sub m plus f sub n minus one f sub m minus one that's the first of each of those things distributed out plus f sub n minus one f sub m plus f sub n minus two f sub m minus one oh it really didn't work too well but it's just that times that okay and i wanted to squeeze that in because i wanted to have this okay i claim that both of these are exactly what we're seeing here okay so uh, this if I set K equals n minus 1 what does this become it becomes f sub n f sub m plus f sub n minus 1 f sub, that's exactly this guy okay so that's going to become an f sub m plus n minus 1 okay that's that guy uh, and then at this, if I set k equals n minus 2, that's an n minus 2. I know it's not super legible, but it's coming from this n minus 2 times fn minus 1. Boom. And if k equals n minus 2, you bump that up by 1, you get the f sub n minus 1. Okay. So in other words, this thing was equal to this, equal to this, equal to this. And that's equal to, by the inductive assumption, and here I'm using now exactly as advertised two cases the case where the just before the case that i don't know yet and the one just before that um, and i'm getting that's f sub m plus n minus one plus f sub m plus n minus two but of course the fibonacci rule says that if i've got two consecutive ones that's exactly and i add them up that's exactly this guy and that's what i wanted to show I took one side of an equation, the more complicated side, which is often how to do it. I could have started with this side as well. In fact, in the previous version, I did. Um, but I think this is more like how it worked out with the, the experimentation. We took the more complicated side. We used Fibonacci twice here. Then we used the inductive assumption, and then we packaged it back up with one more use of Fibonacci. So these guys really are equal. As long as I know that it worked in the two previous cases, I can push it one further and that really is a slight use of strong induction not just the previous case but the two previous cases to get to the next one um and then we're done then we'd probably say a sentence like 
Hence, by strong induction, this is true, the statement is true for all n, and throughout the whole thing, it was all true for an arbitrary m, and so we don't have to, to make a big deal of that, but it's really true for all m and all n, and that's a, a marvelous fact about Fibonacci.